Are you really sober if you still smoke weed and do shrooms every weekend? Maybe. A new trend has taken over, and it's called California sober. Willie Nelson says he's adopted it. It's a practice that involves abstaining from alcohol and hard drugs, but doing marijuana and psychedelics, including ketamine. So, not really sober at all? More like California stoner. Is this something we should embrace, or is it a slippery slope? Returning to the show is my friend, internist and host of the Ask Dr. Drew podcast, Dr. Drew Pinsky. So, Drew, I obviously, as you know, have a very, you know, my view of the world, I don't care what anybody does, do whatever you want with your life, but is it yep. interesting to have the word sober in the phrase California sober when you can do weed, acid, mushrooms, and ketamine? Yes, it's, it's, it's a little blush of denial, let's just say. But uh, you're right, I'm with you, you know, people can do whatever they want, but uh, there are consequences from the choices people make. Listen, Kat, before we get into this sobriety conversation, I have two things I gotta say. That last panel, I think the whole purpose of that panel was just to tell you that uh, you're not worthy of your husband, which I agree. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand that, that that's where they were going with it. I so. agree. Too. I just want to reinforce that. Uh, number one, and also, if people want to see Cat unplugged, Doctor Drew After Dark, it is up right now. Uh, oh she, yeah, uh, NSFW, I, but fun. Yep. Yeah. She <laughs> Thank you. Her book and all the elements, all the things that went on that led to writing that book. But so here we are. Uh, sobriety. Look. Uh, unfortunately, if you have the disease of addiction and you take anything that tickle the reward mechanisms in the middle forebrain bottle, you will reactivate your disease. The thing about addiction is, though, people have the denial with addiction actually reaches the level of sort of neurobiology. It's called anosognosia, where they can't see what is happening to them. We just call it denial colloquially, but it is actually something more powerful that as than that as the disease progresses. And the reality is. If you're going to try it again, it's going to end in the same place. But addicts always have to prove that to themselves. So uh, if that's what they must do, that's what they must do. I do worry about putting hallucinogens into the mix here because we really don't know the long-term effects of that yet. It will have utility. There's no doubt it has antidepressant properties. But at what risk, in what dose, for what frequency, for what duration, we have no idea. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, in my opinion, the answer to that would be, legalizing so we can you know know more about it because people are definitely doing them but we, we all know those people i know those people who are like alcohol is poison which is it is alcohol is not good for you but the yeah. alcohol is poison yeah. but then you know they are doing ketamine every day <laughs> yeah not good not gonna be great but to your point uh, in terms of alcohol being the only carcinogen to most tissues in the body that people use on a regular basis for as a drug of abuse it's the only one that's socially sanctioned it has the greatest impact on our medical health it has the greatest impact on our work lives our days lost of work uh, our productivity of alcohol is a big mess does that mean we need much more and what other alcohols? That's up to people. I, I'm with you generally. I'm sort of have a libertarian bet. But what I don't like about substances is where people get in these camps and you're not allowed. Reminds me of COVID and vaccines and things. You're not allowed to say certain things. You're not allowed to discuss certain aspects of the of the choices people make. When the reality, we know a lot about the medical consequences of the choices people make. When particularly when they have the addictive pathology. And even as a drug of abuse, they can really hurt themselves. Um, speaking of, of, you know, patients and doctors, I, I wanted to ask you if you could suggest something regarding a patient who um, has presented a decreased appetite ever since his mom has been out of town a lot. He is 13 years old and about 10.8 pounds. What? 13 years old, 10.8 pounds. Oh, uh, it's Greg out of town. <laughs> oh, it's your, it's your, uh, it's, it's jeans. Perfect. Yeah. What's going on? I, I thought wanted, you were going to show me a picture of Greg's dog. No, I want to tell you what I've been doing. I want you to know also mentally, am I insane? I'm going out of town. Yeah. I'm having the Same. vet stay at my apartment to be with jeans as well as my sister for emotional support. She likes my sister. So this dumpster animal has a team staying at my apartment in my absence. Is this normal? <laughs> I think Cam needs to call me. He's the one that's going to need the counseling. You're, you're beyond reach, my dear. I've tried for a long time. But, uh, but, but the cat, you know the cat's got 35 medical problems. He's got several this medical not, problems, yes. <laughs> is it congestive heart failure, reflux? Well, not congestive heart a, failure, but yes, HCM. I mean, come on now. He's, 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 he, he, it's, it, uh, he, 
Are you literally putting a vet in your house? Yeah, she's staying in my apartment while I'm in Spain. He needs round-the-clock support in case something goes wrong. It's people, A lot of people do it. Really? <laughs> I don't know if they do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Drew. I'm glad we agreed. Well, okay, guys. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you guys. Of course. Um, but we'll be there in a couple of weeks. Can't and, wait. Uh, it'll be good to see you. And I'll, I do have Cam call me because he's going to do a little, a little counseling after <laughs> the gene. Evergreen statement, probably. Thank you so much.